Okay, we're back. This video is about drilling the slots or holes, making the holes for the vintage air system. This is a 71 Corvette C3. I've got the templates from vintage air in place. Let me show you what I have to do. So I've got to, it's a center punch, like you're gonna put a hole uh, drill there, but th there's no room to get a drill in here. So the plan is, I'm gonna use this Dremel with a round tip. And my plan is uh, to make the holes from the side at an angle and just try to get through the uh, material. It's not that thick, but it is a little bit thick. And then once that's done, I will go to the inside wheel well and I will drill the holes out from this side because I can fit a drill here and there's two sets of holes. This side might be a little challenging, but I think I can get it done. Um, and if I have to, I can hack it up a little with a Dremel and then finish it off. There's also this plate that is supposed to fit up in here like that. I'm not sure. There's a pretty big gap over on this side right there. So I'm not sure if that's fitting properly. These uh, bolts for, for the hood hinge might be a little too long. They obviously don't need to be this long. So maybe I've got the wrong bolts in here. Although I'm pretty sure these are the original. But if I have to, I'll figure out how to get that to fit a little bit better. But right now there's about a half inch gap on the uh, the back side of that. This side fits okay. Uh, fits pretty flush. But the other thing is this: these holes don't really line up with the angle. I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, maybe I need to uh, melt this edge out a little bit, heat it up and push it in so this flattens out and gets some angle. That's what it looks like to me. Anyway, we'll get to that when we get to it. Right now, I'm gonna try to put the uh, the center holes where, where they have marked, it says center punch. Um, I'm gonna try to do that with the Dremel. On this side, uh, this side I can get a drill in, so maybe I'll do that on this side, but this front side is the one that's concerning me. And also, just FYI, uh, it's not straight. The You can see how this slot is angled it's angled out a little bit, like a positive camber or something. It's, at, it's angled out, and I guess that's just for the way that maybe it's supposed to match. Um, I would imagine it's supposed to match this, the OEM, the stock cutout for the hard lines for the uh, compressor and the parts of the AC. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to try to get those holes in there with the Dremel, and I'll check back. Success! All right, so I got my two holes there. And uh, I guess I'll go ahead and do the other side. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll work on this one and see how it goes before I do the other side. Um, I did have to put them in at a slight angle so they're a little bit more uh, on the outboard side because I had to go in, you know, this at an angle like this way. But um, it turned out okay. You can see there. I also used my shop vac and sucked all the dust while I was doing that, which that worked great, you guys. Highly recommend this sophisticated dust capture system. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, figure this out. Now I have to get this going, but from the other side, so maybe I'll yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll just drill the holes and then and then I just will connect the two of them. So I think that's it. All right, we'll be back. You know, before we move on, I uh, just want to show you guys what the the manual for the Vintage Air says. Um, so you can see here, see that picture there? That's in the front. And you can see in this, this is like from looking from the inside of the wheel well right here on the inside. <laughs> They've got the wheel turned out like you can actually get in there. I mean, I guess that's just where it's just showing. 
But yeah, it says just screw this in, sheet metal screws, number 10s, half inch, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can see here though, it's interesting because I don't know why there's so much extra room in the bottom. The, the, uh, down, the inside, the, the hole that's on the engine bay side is smaller. And um, in fact, I can show you here how much smaller it is. So this is on the engine bay side and this is on the radiator side, on the front side, actually on the evaporator side um, or condenser side. I don't know what they're all called. Uh, but um, yeah, interesting. I don't know why that's so much bigger, especially because if you look on here, it just looks like dead space down there. But I'm gonna just follow it. I'm gonna follow the directions. I thought at first it might be for like body flex and things moving, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think it, I think this is all functioning pretty much like one unit. So I don't know why you would need a bigger opening, but I'm just going to do it like the instructions say. So the next thing is, um, I'll just find this, you know, this hole drill and then drill the two holes and then try to connect them. Probably use a, a Dremel, uh, and saw them out. Of course I'll do it a little bit smaller so I can open it up. Uh, with like files and things and make it the shape I want. All right, so I'm just uh, removing the piece of the body that I drilled out. And uh, I wanted to show you guys how thick it is. Um, not super thick. But that's what I, that's how I drilled it. And I used a hole that's a little smaller, you know, because I knew it was going to be a little rough. So this way I can sand it and work it a little bit. Anyway, that's one. Got my uh, dust collection system <laughs> working well. But uh, yeah, this is just what I'm using. Just, it's kind of rough. I'm sure there's something better for fiberglass, but is what I have. All right, moving All on. All right, there's the rear side. Now, I do want to show you guys how much thicker, just FYI, the material was from the uh, engine compartment side Engine, this is the engine compartment side. And now let's compare it to the front side. Interesting. I mean, is it significant? Probably not, but it's like twice as thick. So this, this part is twice as thick as that part, which is weird because you'd think, you know, this is all like one piece here. Um, but anyway, that's the way it is. So next, uh, I'm just going to take a Dremel with a cutting... Uh, blade on it and first I'll mark my vertical lines that's going to be pretty easy and then uh, we'll see what it looks like but I guess it's just a matter of smoothing that out and then I'll figure out how to finish the edge because I, I do want to I don't want to obviously leave uh, fiberglass sitting around so ideally I'd love to make some sort of little uh, flange that goes around there some sort of fitting but I don't know if I want to invest that kind of time maybe just rubber you know, like a trim going around. I don't know, whatever. It's not that big a deal, but I wouldn't mind putting something around there. Uh, but first, uh, just gonna cut out the material and go at it with a with some sanding, something to sand it. All right, I'll check back. All right, pretty much done. Oh, got some fibers. Um, yeah, so I just uh, cut and sanded. This is rough. Still rough, but uh, let me show you what I did. So I just used the Dremel with the with this blade, cuts through just about anything, and then I wrap some 80 grit around. I have I had this thing, which is like for valve lapping, and I just wrap some 80 grit around this. And this was a good size to get the the rounded corners, rounded edges, and then I wrap some 80 grit around this little guy, and uh, got in there and did like you know some of that. I like to finish finish it up by hand, you know, because you know how like these power tools can get away from you really quick so i recommend doing cutting things a little bit smaller and then just finishing it out by hand but um what i'm gonna do next is take a little bit finer grit sandpaper and go around this edge and uh then i think i'll mix up some regular fiberglass um resin resin and then i'll just kind of paint it around the edge just to seal it and then we'll go over it with some of the black paint. Well, this is probably overkill, but I mixed up a tiny bit of fiberglass resin and I just went around the edges. 
uh, just to seal them, you know, tighten them up. Uh, so that'll be set up pretty soon. And then uh, I'm going to stop for today, but probably paint that tomorrow when it's fully cured. Pretty happy with that, though. All right. Um, that's all for now, you guys. I will check in with you later as we get through this vintage air uh, installation. But um, that's a major, major thing. I was kind of putting that off. <laughs> but now I'm glad I did it. I think it looks good. All right. Thanks for watching. See you later.